So today we're going to be speaking about the house of Stefan Humbert Lucas. Yes people, or what is going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. I'm TJ and over here on this channel I'm discussing all things fragrances and the fragrance industry. So if there's any videos you'd like for me to create anything at all, let me know down in the comments. And by the way, if you don't follow me over on TikTok or Instagram, it's the same name as this TJ Talk Sense, where I post daily content. So if you're a little bit impatient and don't want to wait weekly for the YouTube videos, follow me over there. So today I want to speak about a house that gets some good recognition across social media and they get some good hype over on TikTok especially. And it's one, probably because of their bottles and how unique they are. And two, the juices in these fragrances are lovely. And you probably already know who they are from the title or the intro, but it's Stefan Humbert Lucas. So I have five of their fragrances currently and loads of people are interested in Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances and which one should you get. So this is going to be like a buying guide kind of video slash my least to my most favorite slash telling you a little bit about all of the fragrances. But without further ado, man, let's get into it. Starting out with my least favorite from the bunch it is Stefan Humbert Lucas Sand Dance. And this is a close up of the bottle right there. And this is one for, I'll say at least three or four months. It kept catching my eye every time I went into the store. I heard loads of reviews about this fragrance and I was super hyped to get this. And then when I got it, it was like, meh, like, did I need it in the collection? I'm not so sure. So I probably shouldn't have bought it. But even though I say that, I still think this is a nice fragrance and one that I enjoy wearing. So don't get me wrong there. And I would say the color of the bottle kind of represents the juice inside quite well because in the opening you get some whiskey or rum I forgot what it is but you've got some cacao in there that gives it like a nice warm spicy chocolatey vibe and in the base you've got some woodsy notes as well and this is a fragrance that I recommend wearing in the cooler weather just because the notes are a lot more stronger woodsy and a little bit more dense but the biggest problem I have when it comes to sand dance and I wish it wasn't the case but it's the performance man the longevity and projection on this is not great so on my skin anyway it's the least out of all of the fragrances I've got here this I'm getting about five to six hours and six is me being generous with it. And the projection is kind of non-existent after about an hour and a half to two hours, which is not what I expect from a 175 pound fragrance for 50 ml. And also Sandance is a fragrance that you can put into multiple categories. This one could fall into the boozy category. It could also go into being a slight gourmand as well. And it could go into the chocolate kind of category as well. And when I think of the other fragrances in my collection that I've got like Angel Share above me being super boozy and just fantastic. Then you've got Vanilla Diorama that is a slight gourmand with some cacao in it. Then you've got Chocolate Greedy being an out and out chocolate fragrance. I just think all of those three fragrances I just named are kind of way better than this. But definitely let me know your thoughts on what you guys kind of think of this fragrance down in the comments. If I had to rate this fragrance out of 10, I would probably go for six. And the next fragrance up is this gorgeous bottle right here, which is called Pink Boa. I'll give you guys a close up. And I can see when I'm showing you guys the bottle, it might be shining straight into your eyes. So I'm sorry about that. But this is the fragrance I first tried in Harrods Knightsbridge probably seven or eight months ago, like towards the end of last summer. And I enjoyed it. It was juicy. It was sweet. I just like the smell of it, to be honest. And then I picked this one up in Harrods Beauty in Lakeside, I think like two or three months ago now. And do you know what put me off buying a fragrance for a long time was literally the color of the bottle. And in this fragrance, you're going to get a couple of citruses that you pick up in the opening, but you've got two beautiful fruity notes of blackcurrant and raspberry. And then as it dries down, you get vodka, which I never knew until I actually bought the fragrance. And I actually see loads of people saying that Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances lean a little bit too synthetic or a little bit screechy. And I totally disagree, man, especially with this one. I think this one's blended beautifully. And if you guys know me, there's a couple notes that don't really blend well on my skin. And one of them is musk, because whenever I've got musk in a fragrance or it's in the, the base of a fragrance on my skin, it just makes the fragrance super dry. And I don't pick up that sweetness that I like. And this fragrance here, Pink Boa, does have musk in the base, but the balance is done well that it actually smells nice. And a lot of people say this fragrance reminds them of like a fizzy pink lemonade or those fizzy pink sweets. And I do get that, man. When you put your nose to it, it just smells vibrant. It's got a kind of sharp, sugary, kind of sherbet feel to it. It reminds me of like these sweets I used to get when I used to finish school back in the day. It's called Rainbow Dust. I'll pop a picture on the screen if I can find one. And it's just a fragrance that will put you in a good mood, man. And one to wear to gatherings. And where I picture wearing this fragrance is in the spring and summer. Like when the sun's out, you've got a little bit of wind. You're in the shorts, you've got the long socks, the clean white t-shirt. It's just got that kind of feel to it. And the fragrance is a little bit fresh, but I wouldn't class the fragrance as a freshie. So yeah, if you've got a sweet tooth and you like it a bit fruity, then Pink Bow is definitely one for you. But stay to the end of the video to see my favorite one because it's got a similar vibe to this, but a little bit better. And now this one might shock you, but in third place, I'm going with this one here. This is God of Fire. And there's a close up of the bottle. And I think the reason this one might shock you is because when you think of Stefan Humbert Lucas, this is probably the first fragrance that comes to your mind. If you've seen any of these fragrances on this list before, you've probably seen God of Fire. And don't get me wrong, I think it's a brilliant fragrance. It smells great, 
but I think it's a little bit too hyped. And this fragrance, God of Fire, I held off for ages getting it just because I saw loads of people speaking about it all the time and I wanted to try some different stuff from them. But the more content you watch, the more reviews you see and the more you see people kind of gassing the fragrance up, it's only a matter of time before you bite the bullet and grab it. And you guys have seen loads of reviews on this fragrance. So I'm gonna keep it short and sweet with this one. But if you don't already know, God of Fire is a super fruity, super tropical fragrance. As soon as you put your nose to it, you pick up just a fragrance that's perfect for the spring and summer. You're gonna get some mango in there. I also pick up like pineapple and peach. That's what I get anyway. But on my skin, it does go a little bit floral after a couple hours. And I have to tell you guys, the biggest shock when it comes to this fragrance is when I went to buy it, I remember seeing the notes on the back or the bottom of the fragrance and I looked at them and I saw and I was like, this fragrance has oud in it. And the lady was like, yeah, yeah, there's oud in this. And I was like, no way, because I've tried this loads of times and I've never even detected 1% oud in the fragrance and no one can kind of convince me otherwise. But if you get oud in the fragrance, I beg you, let me know. And the smell with this fragrance, I can't fault it. It smells amazing. I would rate it high, like smell alone, I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10. But what I can fault is the performance. So before getting this or when I drop my initial review or unboxing of this on TikTok, I asked people, what kind of performance do you guys get on it? Loads of people told me 12 plus hours. Someone even told me to get like 22 to 24 hours, which is mad, because on my skin, I get seven hours of this and projection isn't amazing. And I'm not really complaining about the longevity. Seven hours for a summer fragrance that's a little bit sweet is good enough for me. But projection was sitting closer to the skin. I mean, when I did move around, I did pick up whiffs of it, but Loads of people say this is a beast mode fragrance and on my skin, sadly, I don't get that. And like I said, for most people, God of Fire is their favorite fragrance from the house. And if it is yours as well, just comment down below the mango with the snake emoji so I know. And now my second favorite from Stefan Humbert Lucas is Isra Mirage. And there is a close up. Just look at that gold block right there. And when I first got the fragrance, loads of people put me onto what Isra and Mirage means. And I've done a little bit of research on it as well. So I don't really want to butcher it or be disrespectful to the culture. So if you want to know what it means, just Google it. But this you may have noticed is not in the same bottle as this one. And that is because this is a different collection. So God of Fire and the other fragrances I've shown, they're all part of the Serpent collection. But this one here, Isra and Mirage, is part of the 777 collection. Now this fragrance is so good. Like there's not enough words to say. And you guys are probably going to hear me talk about it and say, Ra, why is it not first then? But you'll see. But I remember back in January, AJ Tracy gifted me a 5ml sample of this one, which I used and I loved. And then Stephanie Humbert Lucas thankfully sent me out a bottle of this one. And this fragrance is just so smooth. It's light, but it's dense. It's just a very complex scent. And in here, I pick up a lot of stuff. And in the opening of this fragrance, I pick up orange, but it's different to how it's done in a lot of fragrances like God of Fire. This one isn't like a juicy or sweet orange. It's just, it's just there. You just know there's orange in the fragrance, but it's just existing. It's nothing too crazy, which is just weird, but that's kind of what comes out of my head anyway. And then alongside that, I get something rich and inviting, which to me is the cinnamon. You know, I like that sweetness. But I know it's not in the fragrance, but I still get it in the mid to the dry down, which is the combination of like lavender and almond that just makes it kind of smooth and a little bit light. And as this fragrance develops on your skin, it starts to get a little bit more powdery and a little bit more dry at the same time. And it reminds me of being abroad like in the evening as the sun's setting. And then you're picking up like the smell of the sand and the ocean together. It's a weird one, but that's what I get. And then as it dries down even more, the combination of leather and vanilla in this fragrance is just done so well because normally leather in most fragrances is a, a kind of main player that you pick up initially and it's super bold like ombre leather and stuff like that but in this one it's just in the base you can just catch it and it works so well and this one just really reminds me of a Dubai night because when I went there I remember doing quad biking and dune buggy and then after we all come and sat down had some food there was like performers and music playing but it was the the time of night it was like the sun was setting the sand was in the air there was loads of people and it was just good vibes man and this is what Isra and Mirage reminds me of and for me this one's a special fragrance it's one that I would wear on a cool summer's evening but other than that I would wear it on a date night and I'm not sure what else so just because of the versatility of the fragrance and there's not many occasions I can actually see myself rocking this even though when I do I'll enjoy it I've put it in second place but still I've got to rate the fragrance like a 9.5 out of 10 so if you haven't tried this one I definitely urge you to and last but not least is my favorite of the five and it is none other than Venom Incarnate there is a close-up and I absolutely love the bottle I love the color it's red it's my favorite color as well but I definitely urge you not to even try this or even blind buy this if you don't like a sweet fragrance because this fragrance is not a little bit sweet, this is proper sweet. And from this fragrance, you're going to get strawberry, you're going to get raspberry, you're going to get caramel and you're going to get vanilla goodness. And then complemented with that is a little hint of spice as well. And this was the first Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrance that I got, like I mentioned before. And still till now, nothing that I've tried from them has topped this. And a lot of people do compare Venom Incarnate to Zergius Le Capital. And I think the main reason is because they're both strawberry fragrances. But I don't think 
think they smell too similar in my opinion anyway. I think Le Capital leans a little bit more feminine because you do pick up much more florals in that scent. Whereas Venom and Khan, it's much more sweet and punchier and in your face. But definitely try both if you haven't and you decide. So if you want to feel like a snack or you want to grab people's attention or you want to walk past someone and have them think, rah, what the hell is that person wearing? Then I think out of all the five fragrances I've got on this list, Venom and Khan is the one to do the job. And a lot of people have bought this fragrance off of my recommendations and loads of them DM me like, yo, thank you for putting me onto this fragrance. It smells so good. And I can't actually remember someone messaging me or seeing me out in public and telling me, yo, Venom and Carnage trash. So don't worry with that one there. And this fragrance I literally wear kind of all year round. The only days I would stay away from wearing this is just super hot, hot days because of how sweet it is. It can be a bit cloying, can give you a little bit of a headache. But luckily where I live in London, England, it's not super hot and we don't get too many of those days. So it's fine. But they're my ranking from five to one. And when I get more fragrances, I'll make sure to do this again. But I want to say a massive shout out to Stefan Humbert Lucas, man. They always show me love and support. If you guys don't already know, I've done a video last Christmas where I went out in public and gave fragrances out to strangers. And I just hit them up and said, look, would you be interested in jumping on this video with me, sending me out a fragrance? And they was like, yeah, cool. They sent me two or three fragrances for the video, man. So I've got a lot of love for them. So whether you like Stefan Hubert Lucas fragrances or you can't stand them, let me know down in the comments and let's have a discussion about it. But I want to say a massive thank you to anyone who's still watching it. If you got this far, thank you. It means a lot. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to, and I'll catch you in the next video. As always, love for the love, my people. Bye. Uh -huh.